Hello everyone and good morning to you. Welcome to Christ Over Coffee. My name is Andrew Dixon and I would like to welcome you to episode 13 entitled What Can I Do? As we stated last week via social media, I was taking some personal time away from the office a week or so ago, and Sister Rosalia is on retreat this week. And so she not only asks for your prayers as she's on retreat, taking some much needed time away, she also asked if I would fill in, do the episode, and I told her that I would. Um, it's an it's an honor to be here today with you, of course. Um, it's just I was wondering what exactly today's title, what the flow of the show would be, because usually when we collaborate together, we have time to really sit down and iron these things out. But as things would happen with my taking time off and then she taking time off, it was kind of like two ships passing in the wind. But I'm grateful to God for allowing me to bring this episode to you today. Because the idea that came to mind is we have to do something positive in an attempt to counterbalance some of that negativity from the recent mass shooting in Highland Park, Illinois. Although I live in Wisconsin now, I am a Chicago native. I grew up in Chicago, uh, born and raised. And so it's it's interesting how you can see tragedy happening in other places and your heart just rips out because you feel the pain and the hurt in a very small way. The devastation, the victims, the trauma of the survivors, their families and friends. It's something when it happens close to home that really causes you to think differently. I don't know why that is. It's something about when tragedy hits our lives. It has a supernatural way of causing us to see the pain of others in a more real and vivid way. We wanted to do something to let the people of Highland Park, Illinois know that we here at the Convent of the Holy Spirit are praying for them, not just the victims and the survivors, but the community at large. They are a neighboring community to us here in Northfield and Glenview. And so it does truly hit home. And I asked our lovely provincial, uh, Sister Dorota Maria, if she would have something to share with the people. Because in conversation, she told me that she had visited the community of Highland Park over the weekend. And in her sharing with me that information, what I got most deeply from the conversation was her sense of just wanting to do something. And so she was very gracious to write her personal reflection of how she felt about the tragedy, but also her response to it as well. And so I will be narrating her reflection today. I hope that it blesses you as much as it blessed me. 
And so without further ado, let's get to it. It was almost exactly a week later, around 10.14 a.m., that I was asked to consider sharing my feelings in relation to the mass shooting in Highland Park on July 4th, 2022. Initially, I was unaware of the evolving tragedy given that after mass, I spent time visiting with our elderly sisters. Towards the end of lunch, one of the volunteers from our summer peace camp in Rogers Park, Illinois, stated that she was following news about a shooting in Highland Park. This alarmed me because it is almost the neighboring village next to us. Our TV system was out that weekend. So I checked my phone and realizing the gravity of the situation, started to watch the news on my laptop. I was devastated by the circumstances and by the number of victims. Given that we have a large screen computer in the common area, I went to turn it on so other sisters who have difficulty accessing the news except for the television could be aware of the tragedy and also pray for the victims and for the traumatized survivors. Any killing especially the mass killing of totally innocent and random people is very painful and disheartening. These tragic events cause justified anger, raising questions, but this one hit home in a new way. If it happened in Highland Park, it could have happened in Northfield or in Glenview. I intended to walk to the park that day and see how our residents were celebrating. I love the atmosphere of the July 4th family picnic. I admire the decorations, people and pets wearing blues and reds, stripes and stars, the patriotic songs and quotes from important speeches. Every year I walk to the Glen to see the magnificent fireworks. In a sense, they extend the sense of freedom to the vast space. This time, I spent the evening on my knees, praying and asking God, why again? How many more times? What are we not getting? How can I help? And in my heart, I heard the parents of the children in Uvalde, Texas, pleading, do something. The request wasn't shouted at the president only. It was towards me and you as well. Each of us has to do something. The anguish was augmented when I learned that two of our employees 
were present at the parade and two sisters of divine love who live with us were with residents from a nursing home. Since I am not an American, I have no understanding for the Second Amendment. However, I respect that there are generations of Americans who grew up with the right to bear arms. They have a weapon at home or carry one with great responsibility. However, how has it been possible that a civilian relatively with ease can obtain multiple weapons or even military combat weapons. This blows my mind. Why is a young person able to purchase weapons even before legally buying alcohol? Is societal freedom our common safety? Most regrettably is the safety of our children sacrificed on the altar of individual right. Here again, I rely on the power of prayer to effect change. New legislation placing some restrictions, support for troubled young people, loving families, unifying political rhetoric, objective truth, civil and spiritual values and guidance, living for something beyond oneself. In order to give a concrete expression to this longing, I went to Highland Park and joined the parishioners of Immaculate Conception for Mass. At least I was able to pray and be with them to express my solidarity to a few people and support for a community in the process of grieving and healing. I witnessed their radiant faces when greeting one another, happy to be alive. They prolonged hugs of mutual support, contentment for being able to return to routine. The responsorial psalm for the Sunday expressed so eloquently the sentiments in people's hearts. I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O oh God, protect me. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. Psalm 69 This psalm prayer made present very distinctly the many Jewish residents of Highland Park. May God heal and bless all who survived and give joy of eternal life to those who tragically lost their lives. One of our sisters is currently engaged in counseling work in Highland Park right now. Please remember her in your prayers. Also, the sisters are especially praying for the healing of the survivors, especially Cooper. May God bless you all. Sincerely, Sister Dorota Maria.
again, we would like to thank you, Sister Dorota, for taking some time to write your reflection and share it with us. If you yourself are struggling with maybe post trauma, maybe you're watching this this morning and maybe you were there during that shooting. We want you to give us a call today at 847-441-0126. Again, that's 847-441-0126. If you don't feel comfortable speaking to someone over the phone, we want you to also know that we have a website where you can go to the contact section and leave us some information about yourself that maybe we can reach out to you just to check in, offer words of encouragement. And if there's any services that we know of that we can share those with you as well, because we want to do everything that we can to support the community during this time. Our website is www dot SSPS dash USA dot ORG. Again, that's www dot SSPS dash USA dot ORG. We usually reserve this block in the episode for vocation purposes. But today we want to leave it open also for those who need it most during this time. If you are considering whether or not God is calling you to religious service and religious life, we want to speak now to two different people groups specifically. If you feel God calling you to ministry, we want you to give us a call and reach out to us via our website today. Or perhaps you're a lay person who's already married and has a family, or maybe you don't feel particularly called to religious life, but you want to be a part of the good works that the Holy Spirit missionary sisters are doing we want you to give us a call as well and visit our website because in the menu section of the website in the ministries tab there is a specific ministry entitled hsma and that's the holy spirit missionary association and with that Though that is a ministry here at SSPS where you and I can partner with the sisters in the various works, social efforts that they participate in every single day. There's always something that we can do. It's just sometimes we just may need a little help and guidance in understanding what things are available. We also want you to know today that we are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can find us at these various locations down below me. And all that we ask is that you would like, comment, and share the encouragement that you receive weekly from us. There's also information about upcoming events, our Bible sharings, anything that's going on at the convent. So if you would like to be abreast of what's going on here, please consider following us today. And until next time, remember, we're going to be walking this life one sip at a time.
Again, our heartfelt thanks for you joining with us today. Take care and may God bless you and your families. Bye-bye.